Uh, hey, geometry teachers, um, how's it going? Um, just uh, similar to what Conrad shared with us at last Friday's uh, math meeting, um, I wanted to go ahead and set up a, a Google Classroom for us to potentially use next year. Those of us who want to use and want to collaborate, maybe film videos. Um, so I have that in Google Classroom right here, and I'll just kind of go through and go through a few of the ideas that I'm thinking. And then again, I'd love to get your ideas too. Um, but just with all the talk about uh, potentially having some somewhat of a disrupted model next year, um, be it completely distance learning or some distance learning, um, I figured this was maybe a pretty good opportunity to uh, maybe build out some like resources, maybe a library of resources with which we can use to deliver content to our students, um, or even maybe build out a library uh, of content for students to use and access on their on their own. Um, you know, obviously a lot of decisions to be made and uh, stuff to be worked on uh, here. So, anyways, let's take a look at what I have here. It looks pretty much exactly like what Conrad uh, shared with us uh, last week. I thought it was kind of a good beginning. So. And take a look. Uh, here's the code. I'll send this out uh, to you guys so you guys can join and maybe become teachers uh, on it. Um, but if we go to classroom here, I kind of laid this out in the structure that Jurgensen has this. Um, I know that when Conrad kind of presented, he said like, well, maybe each subject can just do um, content base lessons um, every given uh, day and work together regardless of what text you're using. Um, I think probably we should, that Jurgensen teachers should probably stay with Jurgensen uh, the, the textbook um, and, and Google Classroom um, and then Moise can kind of do a separate thing. Um, obviously with geometry being an axiomatic kind of method um, and a way of kind of building uh, knowledge in terms of definitions, postulates, and theorems, and you know, all that stuff. Uh, and it makes sense just to kind of maybe plan around that, right? So um, I have kind of put here, kind of have it organized maybe like um, by chapter. So these are the first five chapters that we cover um, and we do with, with GOA. Um, also at the bottom here, I do have the logic of being of the logic unit. I know that some teachers um, do that, other ones uh, don't. So if people did want to collaborate and film videos and find other resources, maybe make cahoots, um, this is another thing that I'm doing. Uh, this might be a good place to store stuff like that, okay? Um, so anyways, probably the best thing to look at here to sort of get a picture of what, what I was thinking at least um, is maybe down here at chapter four. So each of these uh, sections here, I was thinking that maybe one person maybe takes a day, uh, works on building something out, doesn't have to be super complex, but um, I kind of just put here as kind of placeholders. Let's go into edit. Um, as placeholders here, I got kind of like the content objective and lesson uh, language objective because we're supposed to have those, kept it very, very simple. Obviously, it could be elaborated. Um, and I've done some work on this section just to maybe get a picture of like well, what we could all be working towards. And maybe we can aim to have this in place like a bit before school starts up uh, open so that we're a little more proactive and, and uh, don't have to worry about being quite as reactive as we were in during this uh, learning uh, session cycle. Um, so the way that I've thought about distance learning is that the things that I've wanted to make available to my students at least um, is a lecture or some sort of video explanation that I'm doing that I'm putting together myself um, just to give them context, give them backgrounds. And I know that not every student, right? Not every student pays attention to your lecture in class. Like not every student is going to watch that lecture. But I do think it's important to have that as kind of a backbone about what we do. And part of the reason why I think that we could be sharing a lot of this work um, you know, um, students probably won't want to hear the same teacher lecture them the entire year or putting together videos of, of, of lectures. So it could be really a, a strong benefit to have like, you know, Mondays be this person, Tuesdays be this other person who might present it a little bit differently and be a little bit more engaging um, and not just hearing the same vo voice again and again and again. So um, on this uh, example that I have here for 401, I just kind of shot my own like, well, what am I doing here? I can share this. Maybe maybe we can use this as an example uh, lecture for uh, the first section of 401. So uh, for each section, like it would be an amazing dream of mine if like we had a video for each section, like sort of giving background, introducing the definitions, introducing the postulates, getting to theorems and kind of helping contextualize that for students before they tackle the process, uh, the um, problem sets. I think if we have that in video form too, that allows each teacher um, who's running there, let's say we have to do the, um, the Zoom meetings again, um, running Zoom meetings like that to be a little bit more tactical and like, 
what's the core math? What's the, um, what's the algebra maybe I need to focus on one day or, uh, would a Kahoot be a good th- use of time for a zoom meeting rather than just something that's like kind of a lecture giving backgrounds. Um, so obviously you're still building stuff on top of this, but, um, but anyways, uh, this is sort of what I put together and then, uh, we can feel free to use this as a model. If not, uh, you can build your own thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, one thing that I make available to my students is that I'm, I, I do do lecture slides so we can maybe think about this too. Do we have like kind of slides that we put together too for each, um, section? Um, here are the, the slides that I, I typically give for this section, section four, one, tell straight up, like kind of what they get. They get one definition, one, uh, three theorems and can then go along through it. So I make this available to students so that they have it open and then they can pick and choose what they want to watch in the lecture or, um, they can pre-read it and then watch the lecture so they know kind of what's coming. So, um, a PowerPoint that sort of supplements the, the reading, the textbook obviously is, um, is good for them to do, but they really need a teacher to bring them through it, which is where I think we can all help together. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then I have a, a video here, which I attached, uh, from YouTube. Um, and I'll see if I can find a link and make it open up on, on YouTube. Uh, you sure me turn it down here. Um, okay. Let me open up this on this up on YouTube. There we go. Um, so one thing, another thing that I was thinking is, if we filmed videos like this, we could potentially have like a playlist on YouTube or some sort of organized way for students to access these videos. Um, I think that with Google Classroom, and I'll get into that later, Google Classroom, this, this is sort of like, as Conrad explains, this Google Classroom here is like just for teachers to use. So um, just for us to say, hey, I pick a day, I pick like maybe like section four, three, and I'll film a video for that. Um, and we can all be like adding other stuff. If one of us makes a Kahoot for it, if one of us just finds an interesting article that might be like relevant to it, we can attach it down here. These are all kind of like placeholders down here. Um, but on YouTube, they do have these things called playlists. Um, and maybe I'll just show you where that is here. And you can have kind of um, a playlist where you can access stuff. So I have playlists for like my distance learning lessons here, um, which you can just kind of get to all of them. So let me just click on this here. So um, even if we weren't doing distance learning, I think it could be kind of amazing to have like each section has the lectures online, right? That would free us up in a normal year, I think, to do more interesting things in class. If we know that students could, you know, refer back to this other thing, if they really didn't get a section or, um, if you didn't have a lot of time, a fire alarm goes off one day, which typically happens during my uh, geometry classes. So anyways, we could have a, a kind of um, library like that, that we all uh, kind of share, like, and, and that would free us, I think, up to do more interesting things in class, okay? So and so, anyways, uh, here's kind of what would be my proposal, potentially, is, um, right, have, like, over here, uh, section one, one, section one, two, section one, three, and then have those lectures so people can go back and relook at them and maybe understand the textbook a little bit better um, from this here. Okay. Um, and then down here, I have uh, kind of homework listed. And so we can maybe agree to like give the same homework problems. I don't know. And then another thing that I give to you is homework solutions. That's a great thing for me, at least, like to do for like a Zoom session or a remote synchronous learning type thing is. You know, you try watching the lecture, you try doing what the teacher gives out here and then going over the homework solutions. So, um, so anyways, uh, this is sort of my example for, my, for, for what, where I see this going maybe. Um, but anyway, anyways, um, I wanted to put it up there to see if there was any interest in, in collaborating, helping putting some of these materials together. Um, you know, I, I know we all kind of want to do our own thing and, and create our own classes. We still have space to do that, obviously. Um, on our, on our own here. But, um, if we get different people doing lectures, I think that'll be more interesting for students and, uh, and obviously save us, uh, time and not having to redesign the wheel, uh, on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so here's like, uh, section one, one, this one doesn't really have much in it, right? Somebody wanted to volunteer to, to do a video, kind of, kind of do a video. Um, I do have lectures in PowerPoint form too, so I'm willing to share that for any, any lecture if you want, if that's if that's what we want to do. Um, but uh, this is sort of what I was thinking about having this just for teachers, right? As Conrad said during his meeting, um, and then right. So the nice thing of having this is that you can actually, as Conrad showed, you can take your Google Classroom with your classes 
and you can copy posts. So you can click create here and then you can click reuse posts and that can be done outside of, um, outside of your class. You can take it from like one of these and then push it to your class and, uh, and edit that post too. You can maybe, if there's a video that you want to share, take it off or whatever. Um, so anyways, that's sort of what I had in mind. I figured I'd send it out here and toss it out and, um, and uh, maybe in a few days, I'll, I'll reach out to you guys, see if you're interested in, um, in maybe working together to, uh, to build out some of these things for next year. All right, thanks. Sorry. <laughs>